compare this with the goat skin absorbed lots of humidity that we've been having recently and the tension on the strings pushed the bridge so far down into the skin that it was virtually touching this bar here and in so doing it was ending up sounding like a zither it got um, quieter and quieter and more and more trebly zithery and so I fixed it just by taking everything off it and filling up the bowl with water and the bowl where the bridge had been letting it soak and then letting it dry and it tighten back up again and I'm almost back to where I was when I made it which is great <laughs> dilemma because uh, it will stretch, it already has. I've had to wind the bridge up again a bit already. It, um, it's only not happened on skins that I've had that weren't hairy. Uh, because I've been able to spray them with hairspray or with lacquer to seal them so that they, they're they not quite so hygroscopic. They don't absorb quite so much moisture, they don't stretch quite so much. But the hairy one, you can't do that. It'd, be, it'd feel horrible if you put hairspray on there, put lack on there. I don't lump the hairy, the hairiness. But it's not very practical. I can keep doing this every six months or every wet season, but it's a bit of a pain. And so in order to solve that problem, I made me put a slightly different shape. And um, it's got a casting. That I could then spray and seal up on a nice hot sunny day <laughs> with hairspray or lacquer, so that this wouldn't suffer from the same problem once the bridge was under the load of the strings. I had a hell of a time trying to get my fifth string under the fretboard and to come out this tiny little hole here onto the fifth machine head here. Um, because I use fence wire, don't I? I use fence wire. And fence wire isn't sort of nice straight wire that's been coiled round to fit in the packet for you, like most strings. Fence wire is coiled round. You can't, you can't really straighten it. I don't know how you would. And because it wants to coil round and round and round, it really doesn't want to go along a straight line underneath the, the fretboard at all. <laughs> So, oh, that was problematic. After about half an hour, oh, I was so ready to give up. I wouldn't like to do that again. And I'm going to have to either that or buy some commercial banjo strings. And I don't want to do that. So I'm reluctant to dismantle this thing again because I'll have to make a new string for it. I'll never get that one back through again. And I'm enjoying playing this at the moment. But been very wet and really quite warm and th this is getting worse by the day. I, I, I can and do lay the bridge down now when I finish playing but that's only slowing down the process. It's still, it's still stretching. So I've just got to crack on and get this thing so it'd be playable for good. It's been a bit of a journey but I am nearly there. Wish me luck. Back again. I did some work yesterday. I dismantled the old banjo, got rid of the old puppy. Did a bit of work on the tailpiece. You can see it's not just a lump of wood anymore. Uh, I've given it a bit of shape. I've narrowed it slightly that way. I've shaped the head a little bit so it marks as the block. <laughs> so the next thing would be to make up some strings and then start to play with the bridges I've got. I've got the bridge I made, which is adjustable. It's like an arch top guitar bridge, but it's quite a big and heavy bridge. It gives a bit more sustain, but you lose that 
a tank. But I've also got a standard banjo bridge. What I'll do is I'll make up the fifth string first. The one that's going to go underneath the fretboard here. Coming from six strings, I'm not used to having the path off down there. I keep knocking it and bashing it out of tune. I therefore favour the design that takes the string down underneath the fretboard and out to this fifth machine head here on the pegger. The problem with that is it's got to go through a few bends and so it's less accurate on the tuning. Although I try to make it pretty much as straight as I could from here to the machine head, there's two or three turns for it to have to make, and so that friction makes the tuning problematic slightly. Once it's in tune, it stays in tune probably as well as any other. So I'm going to bring you a little bit nearer to see the string making. Okay, so I've got four different types of wire here. Four different gauges, not different types. I think this is all fence wire. It's got um, a much higher carbon content than normal wire. So it tends to, if you play with your fingernails, it tends to leave sooty marks, pencil marks, on your, uh, on your fingernails. And it's really coily. And that makes things a little more difficult too. Whoa. It's like a slinky. So, first thing to do is to get my nail and get my pliers. Grab it like that. Stick your nail through like that. And then just try and wind it in the opposite way the way it was previously wound is really all you're trying to do. Uh, in this case it just snapped out. Fantastic. Okay. So then I'm just going to wrap that around there like that. Be hard for you to see. I've demonstrated this before. I've got a video showing how I make strings. I don't know if it's any better than this one. It is fiddly this. A bit of practice though. Okay, so the idea is to be able to twist this round and trap the ball in the loop that you're creating. You don't want to go too mad because you could, especially with the thin one, because you could snap it. I'd say that's probably good enough, that's not coming out. And I've got a bit of excess here. So I'd want to wind a bit more of that round as well, I think. Mean. So you need to twist it really. So again, I'm going to grip it. Now if I grip it here, and I turn the same way again, that's not really going to get any tighter. It's just going to um, send a few twists down the line. And then I'm going to say that's probably enough. So you don't want to risk snapping it. I think I'm just going to trim off the excess if I can. And there we go. I don't know how well demonstrated that was. Now, because I put the ball end on already, I'm, um, I'm committed to come through from this end. And last time I did this, I actually came through from this end because it was almost impossible coming this way. But I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try first. And if not, what I'll do is, um, the fifth string and the first string are the same gauge. I make them from the same gauge wire. So if this doesn't work, I'll use this as the first string and I'll, I'll put a fifth string through first and then put a ball on it. It's a little bit trickier doing it that way. I'm back again. Um, I made some progress yesterday. I nearly got it strung. But um, it was by no means plain sailing. I had real difficulty trying to get this fifth string down, this, down that channel in the neck to go underneath the fretboard and come out on the head, on the peg head. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare threading this through. I tried both ends 
and uh, we wouldn't have it. And then I had a smart idea. I found some copper wire and I thought, well, let's try pushing that through. Because it's quite stiff, but it's also quite bendy rather than springy. And so, without much, too much difficulty, I was able to push the copper through in a way that I just wasn't able to push that spindly little fence wire of a fifth string through at all. And there it is. Coming out there already. Console. Can you see that? I don't know if you can. But there it is. And so then I had the idea of sort of working this to and fro to try and smooth the channel. And that worked quite well. I could feel it get easier as I did it. Anyway, I got thus far. And then I had the idea, well, maybe I could pull the cable through using the copper. So I hooked it on this end. I turned the copper back on itself and then absolutely rammed it solid back in the channel, <laughs> about there. I mean, it started to stick and I thought, I couldn't pull it back again with the, so I thought, oh, I'll just really go for it with the pliers. And then that was that, it snapped and it, and it left some. Absolutely wedging the channel solid. So now I can't get anything through there. How stupid is that? Does that mean I'll be forced to have a, a peg half out the neck after all? Really stupid, really annoyed. Um, I lost an hour on that, easily. In the end, I managed to drill it out. Uh, then eventually I managed to get a cable back through again, but it was such a stupid thing to do. And had it been much further up the neck, had it rammed here, game over. I would have had to have had that fifth peg. Half out the neck. <laughs> I'll not do that again. <laughs> You're never too old to learn. So what I'm gonna do now is feed it through first because if I put a ball end on it first, I can only come through from this way. And I can't be guaranteed to achieve that. I've managed to thread the cable through the band joint. So I'm having to make a ball end in situ. I had to use the thicker wire because I could not, for love of money, push the thinner one through the channel, even though I'd widened it with a copper wire. Alright, well, I managed to make the ball end and it's still threaded through the neck here. Oh, feed it through the machine head, get it tightened up, get it tuned up, and see if we can play something on it. There's a fair bit of slack on this, so it's going to take a while. I hope you're not in a hurry. <laughs> I'll fast forward this bit, I'm not worry. Okay, I've found my tuner. really recommend these things. Snark. It's just an excellent little tuner. Clips on the peg head like that. Start with the G, shall we? You get an idea. Yeah, this bridge is a little bit too short. Well, it needs a little bit more work. 
the things that remain for me to do uh, to make my own bridge is going to be a little bit taller than that for sure. I could even just line the feet with this one. The other thing I need to do is to put the other strap butt on about there so I can wear it. And this D string, you probably can't see, it's a little bit too high off the a little bit too high off the frets uh, so I need to just work on that nut a little bit so that that string sits a little bit closer to that first fret and that will make it play a lot nicer. Um, other than that, I've got myself a new banjo. <laughs> this one. Uh, I'll hope that you might be able to see me playing this properly in the next. Cheerio.